Let's start with the bad and slowly work our way towards the stuff of nightmares. First, on our historical ouch tour, number 16, stoning. That's right, back when throwing stones was taken literally. In the olden days, if someone yelled rock and roll, they probably weren't starting a party. Stoning was like the ancient world's version of a very, very harsh community meeting. Imagine being the center of attention, but for all the wrong reasons. Let's talk about the reasons. Usually, someone broke a big rule. For example, it was mainly used for adultery, but sometimes, depending on the ruler, it might have been used for something like if someone cooked a meal that even a starving peasant would pass on. No thanks, I'll just eat my shoe. So, here's how it went down. The unlucky rule breaker was tied up in the town square, or a more intense version. The criminal was buried up to their head with only their face above the ground like some sort of reversed human ostrich. Next thing you know, it's raining rocks. And not the pebble kind. We're talking big, should have stayed in the garden rocks. It was the ancient world's no-nonsense way of saying big no-no, buddy. Stoning was harsh, direct, and had zero chill. It was like the community's way of hitting the unsubscribe button on someone, but with rocks. Speaking of that, now it's the time to hit the subscribe button. Rock concerts back then? Definitely not the one you would ever want a ticket to. All right, let's move on to something even worse. Next on our historical roller coaster of punishments, number 15, the garrote. Now, it might sound like a fancy necktie, but it was far from a fashion statement. This gadget was the medieval answer to, we need to talk. Imagine a chair that nobody ever wanted to sit in, add a metal collar and a handle that twists. Sounds like an evil version of IKEA furniture assembly, doesn't it? Used for severe crimes like espionage or rebellion, we're not talking about stealing the king's chicken here. The garrot was all about making an example. It was used in Rome in the first century BC and later in many European countries during the Middle Ages. Here's how it was performed. The unlucky fellow sits in what could only be described as the least comfortable chair in history. Next, a collar goes around their neck and then it's twist time as the executioner turns the handle. Let's just say it wasn't a situation anyone would want to find themselves in. It's one of those only in the history books moments that make you appreciate the simple things, like not living in the Middle Ages. As we leave the chilling grip of the garrote behind, we're turning up the heat with the next one. Number 14, burning at the stake. Spoiler alert, it's definitely not your average campfire story. So when did people think, hey, let's light a fire under someone, literally? This punishment has ancient origins. It's almost as old as the discovery of fire itself, turning one of humanity's earliest tools into a means of severe penalty. Most people associate it with the medieval period, when it became arguably the most notorious method of punishment, notably during the European witch trials and the Inquisition. It was reserved for witchcraft, heresy, and treason, acts that today are not even considered crimes but were deemed unforgivable by the standards of the time. So. Imagine a medieval town square where the only event more attended than the annual fair was, sadly, burning at the stake. The setup? Not too complex. A stake, some ropes, and enough wood to make a carpenter weep. Here's how it went down. The unfortunate soul, often after a trial that was more drama than law, was tied up to the stake. And that's when things got really horrifying. The fire was lit, and as the flames shot up, so did the cries from the person at the stake. The pain was unimaginable, and the screams echoed through the square, making everyone realize just how bad it was. Like all public punishments, the goal was not only punishing the accused, but also instilling fear and maintaining control over everyone else. Burning at the stake might sound like something from a horror movie, but it was very real and terrifying. Back in the day, making a statement often meant lighting a match. After the intense heat of burning at the stake, we encounter a device shrouded in myth. Number 13, the Iron Maiden. Beware this isn't your typical closet nightmare. Often seen in movies, but not so much in history books, the Iron Maiden is frequently thought of as a medieval torture device. However, except for one ancient report, there's no solid evidence it was used before the 19th century, and the crimes it was used for are too unclear. 
Imagine walking into a dungeon and seeing a menacing, human-sized cabinet lined with spikes, ready to enclose its victim. Nope, it wasn't for hanging coats. Standing in the corner, the Iron Maiden was enough to make anyone's heart race just looking at it. Here's the brutal but simple idea behind it. The unlucky person steps inside. The door closes, and that's about it as far as complexity goes. But the spikes were intentionally made short and positioned in such a way that they wouldn't kill a person immediately. Instead, the victim would endure a slow and agonizing death, gradually bleeding out over time. While Iron Maiden devices can be found in museums, their true place in history is unclear due to a lack of information. From the daunting spikes of the Iron Maiden, we now turn to another equally disturbing invention. Not for the faint of heart, this one takes cruelty to a whole new level. Number 12, the Judas Cradle. Careful now, as this is more than just a sit down. The Judas Cradle, a terrifying device from the depths of medieval torture chambers, was designed not just to punish, but to extract confessions. Invented in the 16th century by the Spanish Inquisition, it was a common tool for torture during that time. Imagine a tall stool with a pyramid-shaped top. Sounds simple, right? But it was far from a place to rest. The victim was suspended with ropes above this pointed peak, with the sharp end positioned to inflict the maximum amount of pain. The method was as straightforward as it was horrifying. The condemned person would be slowly lowered onto the tip. The device was crafted so that the victim wouldn't be impaled quickly, but instead, they would endure prolonged agony. It was a slow, torturous process meant to break both body and spirit. At times, weights were added to increase the suffering, dragging the victim down further. Survival was rare, and those who did faced a painful end due to infection. The Judas Cradle, a relic of a brutal past, shows just how far human cruelty could go in the name of justice. The next one takes us from the dungeons to the open seas. Number 11, keel hauling. A punishment born out of naval tradition, the first mentions of its use come from ancient Greece. Besides that, it was mainly used in the 16th and 17th centuries among various navies, notably the Dutch and British, to enforce discipline at sea. This brutal practice was a sailor's worst nightmare, used both as a punishment for piracy as well as by pirates for what they deemed crimes. First imagine this, a large ship with its bottom covered in sharp barnacles and other marine growth. The sailor to be punished was thrown overboard, tied to a rope that stretched under the ship to the other side. The main threats to the victim depended on the speed of execution. Being dragged quickly meant the sharp barnacles cut like knives and scraped the body with greater force. When the dragging was slower, it wasn't so much about the cuts. Drowning was a real threat. This cruel process was sometimes repeated, meaning surviving at once didn't guarantee the sailor's safety. From the harrowing depths of the sea with keel hauling, we now turn to a form of punishment that's even more unsettling. Number 10, Lingchi, also known as death by a thousand cuts. This is an ancient form of execution in China, used until it was banned in the early 20th century. The punishment was typically reserved for crimes considered especially severe, such as high treason, mass murder, or patricide. It served not just as punishment, but also as a way to scare others from committing similar crimes. The setup. The condemned would be tied to a wooden frame, usually in a public place. The true horror of Ling Chi lay in its meticulous and slow nature. The executioner, often skilled in the practice, would ensure that death did not come swiftly. He would methodically remove pieces of the body, usually starting with the smaller parts like fingers, before moving to limbs and larger sections. It was a process of physical torment and psychological despair, intended to be as much a spectacle as a punishment. Often regarded as one of the most brutal forms of execution in history, 
Ling Chi reflected a belief in the importance of the body's integrity in the afterlife, making this punishment a fate worse than death itself. Leaving behind the excruciating ordeal of Ling Chi, we now turn to another notorious device. Number 9. The Rack It was not your usual pre-exercise stretch routine. Some historical sources suggest its first use dates back to ancient times, attributed to rulers like Alexander the Great and the Roman Emperor Nero. Otherwise, the rack is primarily known as a symbol of medieval torture, widely used across Europe, particularly in the dungeons of England and continental Europe. Its prime goal was brutal interrogations to gain confessions or extract information. Now, imagine a frame with rollers at either end. Sounds like a piece of gym equipment, right? Far from it. The victim's ankles and wrists were fastened to these rollers in a method that was painfully simple, yet effective. As the executioner turned the rollers, the victim's body was stretched beyond its limits. It wasn't a quick process. The idea was to gradually increase the tension, causing immense pain and damage to muscles and ligaments. The rack was feared not just for the physical pain, but for the psychological terror it inflicted. Victims often ended up permanently disabled if they survived. After the painful stretch of the rack, we encounter another terrifying method from history's dark corners. Number 8. Rat Torture This one is as bad as it sounds. Although not widely used, rat torture appeared in some of history's darker periods, from medieval England to early modern periods, and even in some South American military dictatorships. Once again, the setup didn't require much. Someone is tied down and can't move. Then, a pot or bucket filled with starved rats is placed against their body, usually the stomach or chest. Then, the pot is heated, and the rats, frantic to escape the unbearable heat, claw and gnaw directly into the person's flesh. This slow, excruciating torture was a combination of physical pain and the psychological horror of feeling and understanding. You are being eaten alive. After the horrifying account of rat torture, we come to a method that's even more gruesome. Number seven, sawing. This one cuts to the bone, quite literally. Sawing has been a method of execution used throughout history, across various cultures almost everywhere around the world. It's one of those methods that's as old as it is brutal, often used as a public spectacle of the most severe punishment. Different methods of death by sawing have been recorded, but here is the most common and brutal one. The condemned person is hung upside down. This position causes blood to rush to the head, keeping them conscious for longer during the process. Then a large saw is used, starting from the groin and moving downwards. The true horror of sawing lies in its simplicity and brutality. The executioners would use the saw on the victim's body, slicing slowly through the flesh and bone. Being upside down, the victim would remain conscious for much of this horrifying ordeal, experiencing an unimaginable level of pain and terror. Next we turn up the intensity with an even more frightening method. Number six, boiling alive. Boiling alive was a form of execution used in various parts of the world, notably in medieval Europe and in some Asian countries. Historically, it was a penalty for various crimes, like counterfeiting, coin forging, poisoning, and more. Once again, not much preparation was needed. Plenty of wood and a large cauldron with water did the trick just fine. Initially, there was no pain as the water slowly heated, giving the victim a few minutes to hope for a miracle. However, this hope was quickly replaced by dread as the victim knew what was coming, and the anticipation alone was enough to terrify even the greatest optimist. The victim would soon start to endure unbearable pain, but remained conscious and fully aware of what was happening. The method was designed to be prolonged, ensuring that the suffering was not only intense but also visible to all present. The next one is a more prolonged and arguably even more painful method than boiling alive. Number 5. Flaying 
It's not your dreamt up spa skin lifting massage. Flaying, skinning, or the act of removing the skin from the body has been a form of punishment and torture, even in some ancient civilizations. There are sources claiming that Assyrian kings used this method to punish some of their captives, mainly rebel leaders. In medieval Europe, it was sometimes used to punish traitors, and Chinese emperors sometimes used it on corrupt officials. Preparation mainly required an experienced executioner and extremely sharp tools, often unique to each practitioner. It was a real skill to be able to cut large portions of the skin while preserving it because it was often used in rituals after the torture. In flaying, the executioner would meticulously remove the skin from the body while the victim was still alive. There was no particular order or body part designated as a starting point. The pain was so intense that many victims quickly lost consciousness. However, sometimes, depending on the orders, victims were awakened to endure even more pain. Next, we turn to a method known for its uniquely cruel design and the terror it inspired. Number four, Brazen Bull. The Brazen Bull, also known as the Bronze Bull, was an ancient Greek invention, particularly associated with the tyrant Phalaris. The legend goes that Paralos of Athens invented this device and proposed it to Phalaris. The tyrant appreciated the invention's cruel efficiency, but was disgusted by Paralos' pride in such a brutal tool. Phalaris first tested it on the inventor in a twist of fate. After a long period of employing it, the tyrant eventually met his own end inside the bull. Additionally, it's claimed that the Romans later used this torture device to execute Christians. Unlike most torture methods that relied on simpler mechanisms, the brazen bull was a sophisticated device, a hollow bronze statue crafted in the shape and size of an actual bull. Once the victim was placed inside the bull, the executioner would light a fire beneath it, as the metal heated, the victim would suffer unbearable pain. The head of the bull was purportedly designed with a system of tubes and stops, so that the prisoner's screams were converted into sounds like the bellowing of an angry bull. When the bull was reopened after use, the victim's scorched bones then supposedly shone like jewels and were made into bracelets. From the fiery confines of the brazen bull, we move to another ancient method of execution that involves entrapment. Number three, scaphism. Not for the faint of heart, this one is especially sadistic. Scaphism was an ancient Persian method of execution designed to inflict maximum torture over a prolonged period, reserved for the most despised criminals. The punishment required two boats, or hollowed out pieces of wood, creating a confined space that acted as a floating prison. The victim would be regularly fed a mixture of milk and honey, which was also smeared on their body, especially around the eyes, mouth, and other orifices, to attract insects. This forced feeding ensured that the victim wouldn't die from starvation, but would instead face a prolonged and agonizing death. Swarms of insects would inflict painful bites and create festering wounds while the victim's own waste accumulated, worsening their suffering. They would be left to float, often for days, in a state of relentless agony until death finally came from a combination of septic shock, dehydration, and exhaustion. Leaving behind the slow, torturous death of scaphism, we approach a method known for its directness, brutality, and stark terror. Number two, impalement. This form of execution and torture has been recorded in various cultures throughout history, like ancient Mesopotamia, Egypt, and Persia. It was most notoriously employed by Vlad Dracula, also known as Vlad the Impaler, in 15th century Romania. Impalement involves the penetration of a human by an object such as a stake, pole, spear, or hook typically while they are still alive. Most commonly, the stake entered through the torso and exited through the mouth or shoulder, and less commonly, through the sides or back. The victim would be forced onto a sharp, often lubricated stake, which would then be raised upright. The stake's placement and the victim's own body weight would cause it to slowly travel through the body, inflicting continuous pain. 
Death could take hours or even days, characterized by severe suffering and gradual loss of bodily functions. From the excruciating pain of impalement, we turn to what many consider the most brutal method of execution in history. Number one, breaking wheel. The breaking wheel, also known as the Catherine wheel, was a widely used form of capital punishment, primarily in Europe from antiquity through the Middle Ages up to the 19th century. It mainly punished street thieves, traitors, murderers, and arsonists. The breaking wheel consisted of a large wooden wheel, often with an iron rim and sometimes purposely modified with a rectangular iron blade attached to the rim. The first part of the punishment was all about agonizing mutilation of the body, not death. The executioner started by dropping the wheel on the shin bones of the convicted person and then worked his way up to the arms. After the victim's limbs were shattered, the body was braided into another wooden wheel through the broken limbs or tied to the wheel. The wheel was then erected on a mast or pole, like a crucifixion. In some cases, the executioner could decapitate the convicted mercifully, but often the punishment was prolonged to maximize the deterrent effect. Sometimes even fire was kindled under the wheel. If the convict fell from the wheel still alive, or the execution otherwise failed, it was interpreted as divine intervention, and the convicted was spared further torture. However, even in these rare cases, survival was unlikely. So, which punishment would you fear the most if you were about to experience it? Would you order them differently? Or is there a particular method of torture and execution we missed in our list? Please like the video and watch some more. Thanks.